Hey everybody, welcome back. Build Show Network, Steve Basic Architect here. I am upstairs at the Modern Farmhouse. Now, the last time we were here, we shot a video on a cut roof or rafter roof marrying up with a scissor truss roof because in one of the bedrooms, we wanted that volume ceiling. Well, I thought appropriate, we would return and I'll show you how that finished out. Here you can see we have that scissor truss ceiling here. We finished it out with some pseudo white oak beams. We have that nice, beautiful white oak ridge beam that goes down. You can see the window arrangement there. We stepped it up so it kind of works in uh, order with that volume ceiling. That as the ceiling goes up, so don't our windows. And then they come back down. It allows us to take in that beautiful view but also it allows us that we're in this space to create a little bit more volume given the far expanse of a view we have out there that we want to have some kind of a comparative space. So we want to make this a more elaborate spatial bedroom so that not that we can compete with that in any way because it's an absolutely gorgeous view, but it still makes for a little bit more spaciousness and a little feeling of largeness in here that uh, allows us to really appreciate that view. Let's jump back to the studio. We'll break out some section drawings. We'll talk about this a little bit more in depth and uh, I'll see you back at the studio. Hey everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed that trip out onto the job site there. It's a always uh, a good thing and a sad day when you get to go out to the job site and see things near finished. It's exciting to see them come to life and know that uh, they're gonna go on for years and years but it's a sad day because I love watching it come together and the journey's a really great part of it. Anyways, I broke out a couple sections here. We're going to talk about things like scissor trusses, nested gables, and some thoughts that went through my head to develop how we got to where uh, what you just saw it on the job site. So let's check out some drawings. All right, so I grabbed a couple sections out of the drawing set and uh, printed them out here. See the wider one and narrower one. Um, the reason for that is this is where that box beam is, right? Plan and, and plan, it looks something like this. Where that beam box beam comes across. Point there. It comes across and goes like that, right? So it's like that. It's actually much deeper there because we got some windows in here and we got the windows in there, and you can see. That big window there, window there, and then we have some windows here. So that basically gives us that uh, kind of box bay look that we were looking for, but we wanted to maintain that volume ceiling in there, or create the volume ceiling, but then maintain it um, so that that ridge rides through that box bay. Um, so if we cut a section back here, and take a look at it through the uh, wider part. We get this section here revealed, and you can see we have that scissor truss. The outer portion is a nine and 12. The inner portion is a four and a half and 12. Typically scissor trusses are cut so that the bottom cord is half the roof pitch as the upper cord. And uh, you can see here, this I have it dashed in, but that's where that wall steps in, and then we have it here again. And a couple things of note, you know, when you do that is, is obviously you have a plate height here. Well, the plate height on the truss is here. There's an elevation difference of, you know, X there. Because as we go up, if this is two feet and it's rising four and a half and 12, well, then it rose up nine inches. Um, there. And you can see here I have the windows dashed in in the background there that we looked at and uh, pretty much wanted those to step up. You can see that larger one steps up. And we removed the grills, if you notice, from that larger one to basically just give us this big 
window expanse of clear glass, basically artwork of what's happening out there. Um, what I don't have in here is that you saw when we were out on a job site, we have these lines in here that are the actual white oak beams. That was actually something that we brought into the project a little after the drawings were done. So they're not supporting anything because we have the scissor truss behind there. So there's basically just some blocking in there that are holding up this lock mitered U-shaped section of white oak with some blocking in there. And those get that lock mitered corner and they run up there and, and basically into the ridge, which is the same thing. Same kind of setup, just slightly different proportions to uh, make it look like the carrying beam or girder beam. And then these are more of the uh, secondary support beams. But in, in, in laying this out, you know, and if you looked at that previous video, if you haven't seen it, go back. But we actually married up this scissor truss with a traditionally framed cut roof, which was a series of two by twelves that were cut in and we matched the heel height and all of good, that good stuff. So go check that out. But as we progress down to the building and then we cut a section through here now through that, that shorter width, we jump over to this side, which is basically a section through here, right? So that section is now cut through here. And you can see here that there's that raised plate height. I wanted to get that heel height up, um, not only for insulation, but I needed this roof to come back and uh, hit that gable wall at a significant distance away so that it looked intentional. Um, you can see those windows, that bay was perfectly sized. So those windows are again, squeezed right in there. There was literally no room left for wall. Um, and then they turn that corner here and we have a window there and we turn the corner and have windows there. And these have grills, these have grills. Um, and we chose to make the two wings the operable windows. And again, that's that open piece of glass. But basically to create this section, I drew the first section, brought it over, and then simply cropped it at this location and this location. So the ridges, if you know, the ridges align so that it it's what I term a nested gable. So this smaller gable nests inside the larger gable. And again, as a result of that nesting, you can see we get that increased heel height here because we're just climbing significantly up the roof there to uh, hit this so that this main section of roof here and here planes out with this section of roof. And by planing out means that they're coplanar. And so that the main roof of the house just keeps to continue to go down and as it goes down, it hits this point and basically ends at that wall. So, um, you know, high praise to my friends at Howell Custom Building Group. They did a beautiful job. To my good buddy, Brian, who was the uh, uh, site super out there in charge of everything, just did a phenomenal job. There's uh, never a need to chase Brian. He's uh, usually about five steps ahead of you. So you're usually uh, trying to keep up to him. He runs a very tight ship and his execution is flawless. So it was a privilege to work with them on the project. But that's that nested scissor truss. Gets us that box bay, captures that view. We get that view turning the corner on those 90 degrees on that box bay. So turns out client loves it. Great execution by the builder. What I would consider good design. So we all teamed up and it's success. So, all right, Big Red's done. Hopefully you enjoyed that. It's always great. Like I said in the intro there, that uh, seeing these projects come together, but it's a sad day when uh, you have to say goodbye to a project and actually turn it over to the client for use. So anyways, if you're looking for more, 
Um, there's a really great precursor to this video here where I talk about how we married up a uh, truss roof system and a cut roof system. Go back, check out that video. You kind of get the, the full uh, chronological line of uh, how we developed that space. Um, along with that, got over a year's worth of videos. Check those out. Enjoy them. Like I said, the science says, you know, six or seven times you got to watch these to really reap the benefits from them. Um, when you're done with that, check out my good friends, Matt, Jake, Wade, and Brent. Fabulous content. Love watching their videos. And uh, lastly, if you're looking for more information, you can find me on Instagram. Steve Basic Architect. You can find my daughter who works with me and uh, helps me out on all these projects. She's at Alexandra Basic. You can uh, catch Jake, Peter, and myself on the Unbuild It podcast every other Thursday. Dropping some really good building science knowledge, talking about the industry. Um, occasionally we have some good guests on there, but uh, we have a lot of fun. We have a lot of laughs, a lot of jokes, and uh, it's always a good time. So until next time, Long live our buildings.